Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today we're joined by the wonderful Theo Rossi to talk all about his latest Netflix limited series with Kevin Hart, True Story. And I was actually interested because usually when you're working in television, the scripts are coming to you, they're still being written as you're working on the project. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's the way that you've worked extensively in television. But because this was a limited series, did you have the full arc of, of where your character was going, particularly because there's a lot of pivotal backstory that we learn about him towards the end of the season? Um, yeah. Uh, hi. I, I was, uh, I was, I was super fortunate. Um, you know, I had worked with the showrunner, uh, Charles Murray multiple times, and he's one of my closest friends in this journey of life that I'm on. He, we did, uh, we started together in Sons of Anarchy and then we did Luke Cage together. And then, uh, and then we did, uh, a couple other projects that are coming out soon, uh, movies and, and, uh, even some animated stuff that we did together. So we're super close. So when he took on the show and he had called me up, he had mentioned the character. I was doing this other film and, he, he was real brief about it. And, and Eric Newman, uh, who created Narcos, him and Kevin uh, spawned the entire idea and then, you know, went to Charles and all that. And uh, so he told me, so I kind of knew, but due to when we filmed it and all that, so much had changed. And also there's also certain things kind of that we, that we changed in the process, which happens a lot, but I knew, I knew, uh, I definitely knew the scope. I didn't know how it was going to get done. But I knew I knew uh, an idea. And I kept going back to this character, Rupert Pumpkin, that uh, Robert De Niro played in a film called King of Comedy with uh, Jerry Lewis, the Martin Scorsese directed. And it's it's just, you know, he's just taken by everything uh, with with Kevin's character, who he plays kid. So, um, yeah, I knew a good amount, which was fortunate. And you were mentioning that, you, that there were adjustments that were made to the character throughout the show. Did that come from them kind of doing rewrites on the scripts or was that very much about you coming in and starting to play this character in these scenes and, and everybody just kind of feeling how Gene fit into the ecosystem and the world of the story and feeling like there were potentially different directions and different ways to play certain things? Well, again, super fortunate, uh, you know, C. Murray, uh, Charles Murray and I, we have such a, a shorthand that I originally was like, okay, so I'm going to lose all this weight and then I'm going to, I want him to, he dresses like this. And I just started like coming up and then he's like, okay, okay. And then, yeah, this, and then, oh, and this thing we were going to do, that's not going to happen. We're going to change it to this. So that would work. Let's now, because of what you said, let's me. So it's a really like a super collaborative thing. Um, the one thing we were teetering with throughout, and I think that it, I, uh, fortunately, I think it came off well was who, who was he? Was he, was he a threat? Or was he not? And that's something that I always try to chase in every performance I do, because I, I think that um, the one thing that I, it's really funny when I watch humans in this world that they don't seem to grasp that we all have a, 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 a light and a dark side, that we're capable of both. We just choose one or the other. And I think that what I always want with the characters I play is that to, to keep the audience watching is you don't really reveal what it is ultimately uh, throughout it. And with Gene, Gene was no different where I was like, let's see how close we can ride to the line of who is he to people. And then we're going to earn the big payoff at the end to show that he was, you know, there was not ill will in his heart. So I think that as we were crafting it, we started to see that line. So if we went too far with, with darkness, we either cut the scene or we, you know, it was rewritten on the day. Um, and also I had a lot of freedom to, 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 uh, to create him uh, as we were going, because I, again, I don't so much believe his talent in talent as I do in luck and timing. I think that everyone is extremely talented in this world. I think we all have a tremendous amount of talent in us. I think that it's luck and timing. I was, you know, we were filming this during the, the pretty much a very hard, the heart of the pandemic. I could not leave the hotel. I got groceries delivered. I did not leave. I did not see anyone. I did not talk to anyone. So I was, uh, uh, vibing or uh, mimicking his life as much as possible for months. And I don't know if that was possible if I had my family with me or if I was, if there wasn't this situation 
So there was so much that happened that played into that character and what, what is seen there um, that I think was really cool. So, so yeah, I, I think that we, you know, there's a specific scene of darkness with him that you might've said, maybe he's not that good a guy that was taken out uh, that we shot. That's not there. Um, and I think we leaned into that. He was this really good person who just, feels like someone saved his life and he would do anything for him. I love that idea though, of, of creating that spontaneity for the audience where we don't necessarily know what direction that's going to go. And like you were saying, and, and doing that for all of your characters, is that about creating a real spontaneity for yourself and, and kind of having the idea of who the character is, but not necessarily making the choices until you're in the scene or, or how do you approach making sure that you're always creating that spontaneity and that ability to kind of play in different directions? Because, because life, like right now with you and I, it's, it's unknown. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about you. And even if I know you for a hundred years, I don't know anything about you because it could all change. So my thing is that to, 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 to take someone's time, which is so incredibly precious in these days, to, to have someone give you their time, you have to keep them on the edge, for lack of a better word. You have to keep them, their attention what our brain looks at is good and bad. Those are the simplistic forms of being a person. So what it's why when I, I mentor a lot of different young artists and I say like, you know, don't play what they, what, what it, you think it is. Like when people get angry, they don't yell. Some people get quiet. Some people laugh. Some people, you know, some people get just stare, but to yell, is potentially a manufactured version of anger, right? So, so you have to look at everything in when I'm, for me, like when I look at them is like, this person is this way, but let's look at all the other stuff. This is what they're telling us, but what's everything else? How did they get this way? What, 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 where is the, where's the, the darkness in this? Or where is the, in, if it's really dark, like from playing villainous characters, Where's the lightness? What did they love? What did they, you know, what cartoons did they watch when they were kids? And like, I have to show that all in, in what I'm doing, because I think everybody's the hero of their own story. Like they say, nobody feels that they're doing anything wrong or, and some people who are doing a lot of right, don't feel like they're doing a lot of right. They're just doing. So for me, I have to see both sides of everything or I can't do it. And I think that's why I'm always trying, especially now, since I've really fully, started to realize this, I'm trying to take a lot more chances. And, and sometimes it doesn't work. With Gene, I, with Gene, I think the, the culmination of things, Netflix, Kevin, Wesley, Charles, Eric, you know, uh, my buddy Will, uh, um, who's on the show, uh, I think that it, it, it all worked at that moment. And sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And you were talking before about Robert Downey Jr.'s character and, and really, you know, that idea of, of standing on the edge, looking in on a lot of things and just being completely enthralled by it. Um, and I know that you talk very extensively about how starting out as a background artist on a lot of productions was also very pivotal for you as an actor in that observational quality for you in watching other people's performances, watching the way that they worked. And so was there some, were there elements that you were able to kind of pull over from that experience that actually really came into play in the way that you wanted to play this character as someone who, you know, is kind of like waiting for that moment to be invited into the circle and really just taking everything in around him and every moment with such excitement. And, you know, there's like such a, a beautiful childlike joy to the way that mm. he is looking at every single thing that kid does. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's great too. I mean, he, he really is, he's stuck in a state of arrested development, if you might say, because, and, and, and I made sure that I did that on my own. I mean, I spent most of my days when I wasn't working, watching eighties cartoons with the commercials included on YouTube, like in four hour loops. And I watched, um, you know, I went back to drawing cause I used to draw a lot when I was a kid and I, and I just like created and, and I didn't really mess with technology outside of watching those cartoons and all that. I was really enthralled with being a child. I also am fortunate. I have six and four year old boys and, uh, you know, and I've, and I've never spent a day in my life without dogs in it. And those are the most innocent child childhood is innocence. Right. So where I wanted to capture his innocence. 
Um, as someone who started, you know, from, as I always say, like under the cellar of the bottom in this business, I think it's taught me more what not to do than what to do. I've really been such a purveyor because not just was I on set as an extra, I was a waiter and I was a busboy and I was, you know, I worked in an after hours as a bartender that was only frequented by like these high, high level celebrities and in Liberace's old penthouse that I, that I was in there on the weekends. So I watched so much of what not to do. And then I learned what to do when I was on set, if I was surrounded by certain people and that still goes to this day. I, I, I have never stopped being a student. I plan on hopefully being one my entire life. And I like being on the outside. I am, I'm probably as far on the outside of Hollywood that someone can be, meaning that I live in Austin. I, I don't necessarily, I don't think, I don't think anything's bad that, that you know, get, get it. I just have no interest in, in, in um, attention. I love to act. That's about it. I don't, you know what I mean? I, I absolutely love acting and I love the creative process. I love being around crew. I love being around people and I love creating stuff. But after that, I'm good with all the other stuff. Um, I just want to hang out and like on the ranch and chill out, build zip lines and like we were talking about, you know? So, so again, it's not, and again, I don't, I just don't, I don't, I, I say this all the time. I don't exist. And let me let me explain what I don't exist. I exist right now speaking to you. I'm right after this, I'm going to, you know, go take the dog, you know, all running around and I exist as her and I are together. And then I'm going to exist when I go pick up my kids later. Like I'm only in the situation. So I don't exist. I only exist with the other. I need something else to exist. So when I'm acting, I love to act because I'm with that's what I'm doing. I'm playing that character and the other. So I've been really fortunate to be on the outside for so long that I get to really watch and see. And uh, I think it's, I think it's helping. I don't know. It seems yeah. to help. So this is kind of the perfect character for you with all of that in mind. Yeah. And also one that nobody had ever, you know, you, you get Hollywood's a weird thing, right? Because you, 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 you get known, let's say, you know, in, in, a, in the industry and in the world, like Sons of Anarchy was a really big deal for a lot of us on the show. And we played these, you know, these anti-heroes, these, you know, what people didn't, so people who didn't watch the show were like, oh, they were a bunch of villainous, you know, uh, bikers or whatever. But ultimately it was like this family show and, and the character Juice that I was playing was really he was really, he felt a lot of things and he had a lot going on in his life throughout the show. And I think that all you can hope is that you're playing these four dimensional characters uh, throughout. So Gene, Gene was something that Charles, who knew me so well, we've known each other for so long, like I said, that he knew, he was like, you know, that's, you can, you should do this. And so when people are so, uh, I, because they try to tie you to something, but like I said, I don't, I'm nobody. I'm only who I'm playing. So I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't, there's nothing to tie me to. And I think there's nothing to tie any artist to if they're, if they're trying to uh, disappear into their characters. And going back to what you were saying before about the childlike qualities and that side of the character, um, you know, that really transcends into the way that Gene interacts with people. And sometimes it's that he maybe doesn't read a situation the same way. You know, when um, Kevin Hart's character is coming out of a kid's hospital, he doesn't understand why he wouldn't want to stop and talk to him in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and that maybe he's in an emotional space without even knowing everything else that's going on. Um, but it's also the way that he carries himself and the way that he gets physically close to people because he's not thinking about that space that we usually have between one another when we're having conversations you know kids get much closer and are much more tactile in a different way mm -hmm. and so how did you find that that side and those elements of him as a character in scenes with other people so great that you saw all that um yeah i th there is so kid kids is a great example but we could also say it to you know people who are very excitable when they're excited in a moment nothing else matters. 
right? Because you, you have your eye on the prize in the excitement. So you're unaware. So what I tell my kids all the time is before we go to bed, as I say, I wish you awareness. I wish you awareness. I love you. I wish you awareness. You're a king, right? Is I, awareness is awareness of the world, awareness of others. When people get excitable, they don't, they, they have no, they don't know what's happening around because they only want that thing. So sometimes in the case of, let's say I've watched people, if I've been around, you know, someone who might be considered a very large celebrity, I've watched people who are like, can I get a picture? 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 And they're like, they're not reading what's happening. You know, maybe that person's, uh, something's going on with them. They're just not thinking about it. And it's not their fault. That doesn't, they're just so focused on that one thing. Gene was very focused on one thing, and that was kid. It's all that mattered. Add into that the fact that he felt he owed him his life. And when you feel like you owe someone your life, yours doesn't matter. So what you eat doesn't matter. What you, how you dress doesn't matter. You just want to make that person happy. And he was, nothing mattered. And children, like I see with my, my two kids, when they want something, they're not even thinking. So I'll be like, you know, I'll be like, okay, f- five breaths. Tell me again, what, what's going on? And it's like, I, I just, <sighs> and it's like, that's, so if you take, if you look at all that and you kind of, you know, piece it all together, you kind of get someone like Gene Abishan, which is a fun one. I also think one of the things in, in watching Gene as a character is he, he captures that incredibly universal thing where at the end of the day most people and most characters they just want that acknowledgement you know they want to be seen by someone or by people and for him sure. it's being seen and being acknowledged by a kid and then he actually gets that and you know it's really beautiful to kind of watch him achieve what it is that he's been hoping for and, and imagining all this time you know what's it like for him the first time he gets to go backstage um and so how did you want to play that side where so many of those instances are about the excitement but also just that like you know will you turn around and look at me do you see me and that aspect of it yeah longing for acceptances i mean that's that's uh intrinsically human right we we are all longing for acceptance in one way or another and Sometimes the thing we dreamed of how to get that acceptance comes and it's not maybe as satisfying as we uh, thought. His only uh, barometer of happiness was kids' acceptance. And there were many times where kids would, kid would say something and he's like, you don't, you don't know how much that means to me because he had built that moment up in his head. He had built hanging out with him in his head. He had created these worlds, which a lot of us do for whatever. It might be, uh, what would I do if I was here? What would I do if I had this job? Or what would I do if I have this? We create them. He had created those, manufactured them, and now he was living them. And, And I think that there are many times where they did live up to his expectations, and then there were times where it didn't, right? Where when he was at the event with him, and he watched him with another fan, and he was like, wait a second, this wasn't, this wasn't part of the story that I thought. And he starts to malfunction in a way because that's not how he wanted it in his, in his creation. So I think that our longing for acceptance, and listen, our longing for acceptance right now is kind of where we are. It's what social media is, right? It's a longing for acceptance, right? We, we, we just want, so we want people to, we want to be friendly with people and we want an acceptance from things and we want the likes and we want whatever. That's, that's again, this thing that has been with us since the dawn of human beings. So with him, it's more of a childlike acceptance. He wants like, that's where you can relate it to, to a dog or, or, you know, as some people might say, use the term pet, like, you know, um, it's, it's, they just want, you're, you're good. You're okay. And he wanted that so bad. And uh, he just needed that from this person who had taken him from the depths of himself. Yeah. And there's a, there's a culmination for him in a moment where he has the opportunity to, to make a choice. And it's, do I make the choice of self-preservation and look after myself or do I preserve kid knowing 
the impact that this is potentially going to have on me and the fallout for my personal self if I make this choice. And, you know, with the fact that he makes that latter choice, we as audience members in watching the show completely understand why he does that. You know, this it makes sense that he does. And that's because of the way that you've played him up until that point. And so mm-hmm. did you kind of take that culmination and that decision that he has to make for himself later on and and think about the way that you needed to be able to play to his decision making, to play to that relationship, to play to that connectivity that he has with Kid so that at the end of the day, he essentially chooses Kid over his own self. Yeah, we don't we don't get that. We don't get the satisfaction. Oh, it's a strange word to use there. We don't get the satisfaction of of what he did if we don't get everything before. Right. That, that could have. So when we were looking at that scene, it was kind of nothing like we did. Like I was like, okay, so I want, I want him to be, you know, uh, fully naked, basically like just in boxers, you know, cause I want it to be really, you know, vicious. And I want, I, you know, we created a prosthetic with a broken jaw and we did all this work. The great Doug No did all this, uh, crazy special effects of like that he'd been beaten for a while that wasn't there because what I wanted I wanted it to look like it'd been going for a while and that he had been ultimately being tortured right in a way but we don't get to earn your feeling sadness for him if we don't have everything prior to it in the six episodes or whatever it is five episodes whatever it was before it right and I think that um what he, what I was playing in my head at that moment was that kid was going to do a lot more for the world and for other people than he could ever do. So his sacrifice was not just for his absolute love of him, but for, he could do great things. I know he can. I've done what I needed to do. That was, you know, I'm, it's time for me to go for him to, you know, whatever. And again, I don't think any of that works. You know, I always say you have to earn a death in, in something that you do. If you don't earn the death, it's just, oh yeah. Especially now when we're watching, you know, it's a four hour thing, right? True story. You watch in four hours, almost like watching a long movie. So if you don't really earn that, it's, you know, whatever. So, so there was that build up to, to, uh, Again, he owed him so much. And he says it right before to Colton, you know, because Colton says to him, you know, why, why do you love him so much? And then you, and then you really get that right before, which is it's just another gut punch. I mean, to anyone who's watching. And in the way that you work with with other actors and with your scene partners, you know, I appreciate the way that when you talk about showing up for the people that you're working with, it's 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 not even just about what you do on camera. It's also about what you do off camera. And sometimes that's the way that you're reading lines in a scene, even when you're not on camera and still giving them the performance that they need to feed off of. And then sometimes it's, you know, what's happening between the scenes and between the takes. So what's important to you in terms of the way that you show up for the people that you're working with? Oh man, it's my favorite part. I mean, I, I would say my best acting is done off camera. I mean, I am 10 times better when the camera is not on me only because again, and I'm still getting there and hopefully I do one day is I take so many chances, right? Like, and I, I, I've, I've learned now to take a ton of chances when I'm, when I'm wherever the camera is, but what I'm always going to do is, um, take so many chances with the, uh, with the other person to get them, you know, listen in this, in, 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 in the crazy art of, of, of acting in front of a camera, you know, it could get monotonous, meaning like the moving and the timing and how many shots you do and this and that. So I always look at it like the finger snap, like we got, we got to wake up. So how do we wake up? Well, we're going to wake up because I'm going to say something completely different. Or I'm going to say something, you know, uh, that that's going to get you to kind of listen to this and we're going to do this. And, and again, it's, you're only as good as your dance partner. So no scene is one sided. So I want to make sure that between takes, we're hanging out, we're, we're, we're doing our thing. And that might not be discussing. We never really discuss acting or, or the scenes where there's a comfortability. Because when you're comfortable with people, you will show more of yourself. And that goes for even if you're playing characters. So I think it's just 
being an open and honest person who doesn't know, you know, admits that they know nothing or no, don't know anything. And it's just learning, you know, and then in every way. And then also, you know, you got to forget. Ego is the death of the artist, right? Ego is truly the death of any artist in any way of any median and anything you do, you know, it, whatever it is, it could be uh, from an artist, from an actor to a podcaster, to a painter. It's if you if you have an ego, you lose. So you have to get rid of that. And to me, I don't have one. I've, I've extinguished that long ago. It might come up in certain things sometimes where I'm like, oh man, I think I'm losing hair or something. Like, you know, it's like weird stuff, but it's like you, as an artist, I know I can't be. So with, with the other, I don't have an ego. I want them to be amazing. I want them to be the best that they can be. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to do that. So it's endurance, it's knowing them, knowing what works for them, knowing what doesn't, um, and, and knowing as much about the people that you can, you know, both personally, I studied every single thing about Kevin, I knew everything about his life, everything before I did it. So I, ne I needed to know that even if he didn't know I knew that. And then, um, and then you just have to be there being in the moment I, I you know I don't bring my phone to set I don't do any of that stuff I just want to be I want to live in that moment I want to be there for for not just the other people but for the crew and 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 for everyone I just want to be in the moment at all times I think that's wonderful and it's so great listening to and hearing you share all these details so thank you so much Theo really really appreciate your time thank you so much and I really appreciate it as well and I hope you enjoy your day <laughs>